Good morning, everyone. Nice to see you again for this second day of the virtual training on the SDG 241. I hope you have had the nice end of the day yesterday and that you have taught, sorry, and that you have uh, taught a bit about the discussions we have had yesterday. Before starting, I would like to recap quickly what uh, we have learned yesterday. So we have seen the 21 SDG indicators uh, that are under the FAO custodianship. We have focused, of course, on the SDG 241. And we have seen uh, its background, the scope, periodicity, levels, limitations, policy use, and so on. And finally, we have moved to the framework, uh, which is the core content of this uh, training. We have seen the details, uh, the entire economic dimension and the methodology to calculate it um, with the three sub-indicators, uh, which are the farm output value per hectare, net farm income, and the risk mitigation mechanism. We have then passed to the environmental dimension with its five sub-indicators, so prevalence of soil degradation, variation in water availability, management of fertilizers and uh, management of pesticides. And today we are going to see the last one, which is the use of agrobiodiversity supportive practices. Then we will move to the last dimension, the social one, with the other three sub-indicators. Moreover, today we will, we will see uh, the SDG 241 data collection questionnaires and the results of the pilot exercise where some of your countries took part. And finally, a colleague from Statistics Canada will illustrate their experience in the SDG 241 reporting. If you have a look at the original agenda, you can notice that uh, there is one presentation which is missing today, the one about the agri-survey program. For your information, we have moved uh, this presentation to tomorrow. So yesterday has been a very interesting day, full of concept and many doubts have been clarified through the question and answer sessions. In case some of you have some questions already, considering what we have seen uh, uh, yesterday, please feel free uh, to raise it now. Uh, so in the chat box, of course, you are always uh, more than welcome. Let me see. Uh, okay, there is only one good morning message, thank you. So in case uh, you don't have one, any questions or, uh, so far, uh, we start immediately and uh, with the next uh, so sub-indicators and I leave the floor to Asanjar. Thank you very much, Stefania. Can you confirm if you can hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. So as Stefania mentioned yesterday, we covered the conceptual and methodological basis for SDG 241. The fact that, you know, we are focused primarily on agriculture holdings that produce crops and livestock. The periodicity of the indicator is uh, three years and the data is collected using agriculture surveys or farm surveys. Now, today we have to cover the last indicator in the environmental dimension. So let me share my screen. So this sub-indicator is the last one in the environmental dimension. The, to give you some context, the sub-indicator was subject of discussion and refinement in 2019 as part of the 2020 comprehensive review of the global indicator framework. Uh, the discussion involved a country-led working group, which was coordinated by Canada with Brazil, USA, Argentina, Chile, France, and Russian Federation as a members. After an year-long discussions and consultations, uh, towards the end of 2019, a compromise solution on the indicator criteria was reached, after which it was tabled again for IAEG SDG review, where the group re-approved and re-endorsed uh, the indicator methodology in November 2019. 
from methodological perspective, the sub indicator measures the level of adoption of agro biodiversity supportive practices by the farm at ecosystem species and genetic levels for both crops and livestock. One important point to note is that specifically in case of this indicator, the scope is the entire agriculture area of the holding as opposed to agriculture land area that is used uh, as a denominator for, uh, for uh, other sub indicators. So based on whether organic uh, certified agriculture is practiced at a country level, two set of criteria are proposed. One for countries, countries practicing traditional agriculture and another one for countries where organic agriculture is practiced by and large. So here are the set of the criteria for uh, countries with no organic certification. I'm not gonna go again through the criteria because these concepts are well explained in the enumerator manual. And if you would like to understand more about uh, the definitions about uh, these uh, term, the terminologies, you can go to that uh, particular document, which we will of course uh, share with you uh, post this training for you to better understand uh, as to what uh, these are about. So for, for countries with no organic certification uh, in place, uh, we propose five criteria. For countries with organic certification, uh, we are proposing six criteria. Uh, the five are the same from the previous slide. Uh, one is, uh, one additional one which is highlighted in red here is, uh, is, uh, is, 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 is added which is farm produces agriculture products that are organically certified or its products are undergoing their certification process. Uh, and again, let me reiterate that it applies only to countries with organic certification. Now, in terms of thresholds, of course, we are providing two sets of criteria. So we have devised two sets of uh, threshold to assign farm uh, um, and the agriculture area that it owns, uh, manages and operates sustainability statuses. So uh, depending as to whether if the countries are practicing organic agriculture, then the farms will be classified as green. If the agriculture holding meets at least three of the uh, before mentioned uh, criteria, it will be highlighted as yellow. If the agriculture holding meets at least one of the criteria listed on the previous slide, and the agriculture holding is uh, labeled red if it meets none of the criteria. Similarly, for countries with no organic certification, because we have five criteria, so in this case, the farms will be labeled green if the agriculture holding meets at least two of the listed criteria. Agriculture holdings are uh, assigned yellow status if it uh, meets at least one of the uh, before mentioned criteria and the agriculture holding is uh, labeled red or unsustainable if it meets none of the above criteria. And the last step, of course, is the same from the previous slide. Once we labeled the farms and its agriculture area green, yellow, and red statuses, we then add up the uh, uh, agriculture area by sustainability status and divide it by the nationally representative agriculture area that is uh, collected using the sample uh, survey to arrive at the proportions for, uh, for, for this uh, indicator. Are there any questions? No. Okay. So with this, we come to the end of the five sub indicator in the environmental dimension. And I will quickly move into the social dimension, which is the last one within the framework of SCG 241. It constitutes of three sub indicators, uh, wage rate in agriculture, uh, food insecurity experience scale, and uh, secure rights to land tenure. So the first sub indicator in the social dimension is wage rate in agriculture. The theme is decent employment. The reference is last calendar year. One important point to note is that, that the coverage or the applicability of this uh, uh, particular sub-indicator um, uh, is only for the farms that uh, hire unskilled uh, external labor. So this theme provides information on the uh, 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 remuneration of unskilled workers working on the farm that belong to the elementary occupation group as defined by the international standard classification of occupation 
uh, Code 92, which is pu published by ILO or International Labour Organization. In other words, it informs about the economic risks faced by the unskilled workers who are performing simple and routine tasks, uh, requiring the use of simple handheld tools and very often con uh, considerable um, uh, physical effort. Um, to exemplify unskilled workers who are involved in digging, shoveling, loading, unloading, stacking, racking, uh, spreading of manure or fertilizer, watering, weeding, picking fruits or vegetables, um, and various uh, seeds or plants, feeding animals, cleaning animal quarters, and so on. Um, so once we collect information on the unskilled uh, labor remuneration, then what we do is we benchmark it against uh, the uh, prevailing uh, national minimum wage rate in agriculture sector or national minimum wage rate to assign farm green, yellow, and red statuses. So in terms of uh, uh, the thresholds, the farms are assigned green status if the wage rate paid to unskilled labor, which I defined already, is above the minimum national wage rate or minimum agriculture sector wage rate, if, if available. Uh, and again, as this indicator is not applicable to farms that are not hiring any labor, so by default, those farms will be highlighted as green. Um, the farms will be classified uh, yellow or acceptable uh, if the wage rate paid to unskilled labor is equal to or um, is equal to the minimum national wage rate or minimum agriculture se sector wage rate if it is available. And the farms will be assigned red status if the wage rate paid to unskilled labor is below the minimum national wage rate or minimum agriculture sector wage rate if available. So again, uh, depending on the daily average wage rate paid to agriculture, uh, unskilled worker, the farm will be classified green, yellow, and red statuses. Uh, and, 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 and then we combine the agriculture area assigned desirable, acceptable, and sustainable status, and we divide it by the total agriculture area. This is a similar step that we perform for all the sub-indicators to arrive at the proportion under each color. Uh, Stefania, any questions on, on this part? Not, not yet. No questions. So then we move to the the tenth sub indicator within the framework of SG two four one, which is food insecurity uh, experience scale. This is a well known um, uh, indicator. It's already tier one. It's uh, SDG two point one point two meaning that uh, it has an established methodology and data on it is regularly collected by countries and uh, is reported regularly by FAO. Um, this particular sub-indicator is customized uh, or tailored in the context of 241 and it tries to measure the extent to which household of the holder or the owner of the farm are food uh, uh, secure despite having some agriculture production. I will not go into the details of how to estimate the severity of food insecurity using uh, food insecurity experience scale. First, assuming that many of you may know uh, about this indicator because it's already tier one and data is regularly collected and reported by countries. And secondly, because of the, because of the shortage of time. However, I will touch upon the basics of the methodology, which uh, while referring you to the training material on the indicator, which is already published by by FAO. In short, PS is a metric of uh, severity of food insecurity that is measured at a household level. It is a statistical measurement scale uh, designed to measure unobservable or latent traits and is measured based on people direct yes or no responses to the eight uh, PS questions regarding their access to ad adequate food. The fierce questions refers to the experiences of the individual respondents or of the respondent uh, household as a whole. Obviously, these answers are answered um, by the holder of or the owner of the agriculture holding. 
Um, the, foc the question uh, focuses on self-reported -rep food-related behaviors and experiences associated with increasing difficulties in assessing food due to resource, uh, resource constraints. Here are the eight fears questions that are used back data on the food insecurity of the, of the household of the holder of, uh, of the farm. I will again reframe from going into details of uh, explaining each question. A detailed explanation on what this question entails is given in the PDF file uh, that, uh, that I have um, attached, to, attached to this slide. So once the data on the eight fears question is collected using agriculture uh, survey, the first step is to prepare the data for uh, analysis, where the standard labels are eight to the eight fears questions. In the second step, the data is inputted into the model prepared by FAO FIES team for parameter estimations. Um, that is a calculation of the level of severity of food insecurity associated with each questions and each respondent is estimated using a model which is called a rash model. In total, two parameters are estimated. Item parameters, um, also technically called the difficulty parameters, um, which refers to and are derived from the eight PS questions using the model and the respondent parameters or ability parameters that are derived from the number of people who responded to the eight fierce uh, question. The third step is a statistical validation, where an, an assessment is made as to whether, depending on the quality of data collected, the estimated parameters are valid, that is both the item parameters and respondent parameters, um, and to check if the data are consistent with the theoretical assumption that informs the model. Finally, as the last step, the calculation of sustainability status of agriculture holding is carried out. Once a measure of severity of food insecurity condition experienced by each respondent, um, that is the holder of agriculture holding, uh, based on their answer to the eight years questions has been derived, the sustainability status of the holding that is desirable, acceptable, or non-sustainable as per SDG 241 methodology is then derived accordingly. So now let me elaborate the steps described on the previous slide. Based on the data collecting using the eight FIES questions, it is prepared for analysis where each data item is coded where two is assigned for no response and one is assigned for, uh, for, for yes. After the coding, standard labels are added to the eight FIES questions as per the model developed by FAO FIES team. So um, for these codes, which are shown on the previous slides uh, in this row, uh, of course, this code will be different based on the, on the, on the country survey and the coding uh, mechanism used by the country. However, we will then uh, label it with, with standard uh, uh, labels. Uh, for the question number one, we call it worried, healthy, few foods, skipped, ate less, run out, hungry, and, and whole day. So, and then the uh, one and two uh, on the previous slide, the, the codes are then replaced with the standard label as to, as to whether the um, holder of the agriculture holding, holding, you know, gave yes or no answer to the, to the eight years question. So once the data has been properly codified and standard labels are added to the eight FIES questions, the next step involves estimating the parameters associated with, the, uh, with, with these questions. Um, the methodology underlying the estimation of the parameters for prevalence of severity of food insecurity uh, is based on the item response theory, which is used to analyze responses to the survey or the test questions. In this case, the eight PS questions. The item response theory is a quantitative measure of uh, traits or latent traits 
that can be derived from a set of dichotomous or binary variables that take a value one or two. Um, thereafter, as I mentioned earlier, Rush model, uh, which is developed by FAO, um, which is in fact used by FAO, uh, is applied for the analysis of the, of the FIAS data. So once the data is inputted into the model, the respondent parameters are estimated from the raw scores. The raw scores are the number of affirmative or yes uh, responses given to the eight years questions. The raw score is an int integer number with a value between zero and eight. Thus the total number of uh, parameters are, uh, are nine. So as you can see here, once we input, it, uh, input the, the, the data into the model, um, you know, we will, we will arrive at the difficulty parameters or the respondent parameters, um, whereby um, the, the, the one in the top, which is shown as negative, is the least severity, while the, the last one, which is the whole day, shows the highest uh, severity in terms of uh, food insecurity. The sub indicator, um, so the, the second set of parameters that we derive are the respondent parameters. As I mentioned to you earlier, the respondent parameters, are, um, uh, raw score is used to calculate, uh, calculate this, uh, this parameter. The, and I mentioned that uh, earlier that uh, the raw score is the number of affirmative or yes responses given to the eight years question, an integer number. Uh, with a value between zero and eight, and hence the total number of uh, respondent parameters are, 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 uh, are nine. So once we, once we derive the respondent parameters or the ability parameters, which are, which are depicted here, the standard errors and the frequency of the, uh, uh, of the agriculture holdings that responded yes to each fierce questions uh, we then uh, estimate this frequency and then you know this information the respondent parameter standard errors and frequency and the item parameters which are the difficulty parameters are then used to estimate the probability of severity of food insecurity at the household level So when, once we have the difficulty parameters uh, estimated, we then plug it into the um, Excel file prepared uh, or which can be accessed here. This, uh, this information is then inputted into this uh, Excel file uh, for the difficulty parameters and as well for the ability parameters. Along with the along with the standard errors and the number of uh, and the frequency uh, of the uh, of the uh, agriculture holding that responded um, yes or no to these questions to arrive at the probability of severity of uh, of uh, food insecurity. So um, once uh, we derive this uh, probability of moderately and severe, severe food insecurity and probability of uh, severe food insecurity, we arrive at two numbers. And these are in fact the, the values of uh, SDG indicator 2.1.2, which is, uh, which is uh, the, the FIES, uh, FIES uh, indicator. Now in case of 241, we go one step beyond uh, uh, this uh, process and we then use these probabilities and then we start comparing the individual household probabilities based on their raw scores and uh, item and respondent parameters and then we compare it with the uh, with the with the uh, probabilities of the distribution to assign the farms and uh, and, and and the agriculture area that it owns manages and operates uh, sustainability statuses So just to 
go through the green, yellow, and red statuses that are assigned to agriculture holding and the agriculture area it owns, manages, and operates. The farm is assigned green status if the probability of a household of the holder of the agriculture holding uh, to be moderate to severe food insecure is less than 0.5 and the probability to be severely food secure is, uh, um, is, is less than 0.5 then you know we consider this particular agriculture holding to be to be classified as uh, as desirable or green the holdings are classified as yellow or acceptable or moderately food insecure if the probability of a household of the holder of the holding to be moderately to severe food insecure is greater than 0.5 and the probability to be severe food insecure is less than 0.5 then we classify this farm as uh, as, as uh, yellow and the farms are classified as red if the probability to uh, of the household of the holder of the agriculture holding to be severe food insecure then we find this agriculture holding as uh, as red so here is an example uh, based on the, the data that we um, collected uh, processed and analyzed for bangladesh pilot test so as you can see here the uh, agriculture holding one uh, has a probability to be moderately and severely food insecure is, 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 is zero, as well the probability to be severely food uh, insecure is zero, which is less than 0.5 in both these cases, and hence we classify this uh, agriculture holding as desirable. Another case, uh, holding number four, the probability to be moderately to severely food insecure is greater than 0.5 it uh, it uh, is estimated to be 0.7 however the probability to be severely food insecure is less than 0.5 hence we classify it as yellow and in case of holding 13 the probability to be moderately and severely food insecure for this particular agriculture holding is greater than 0.5 and as well the probability to be severely food insecure is greater than 0.5 and hence, this agriculture holding and the agriculture area that it owns, manages, and operates is, uh, is uh, classified as uh, non-sustainable. And once we carry out uh, all these steps, the last step remains the same, like in case of all other uh, sub-indicators. Then add together all the areas classified as green, yellow and red and divided by the nationally representative agriculture area to derive the proportions uh, by, by green, yellow and red colors. Okay. Okay. So the last uh, sub indicator within the framework of SDG 241 is secure rights to land tenure. This sub indicator allows assessing sustainability in terms of rights over use of agriculture land areas. Since agricultural land is a key input for agriculture production, having secure rights over land ensures that agriculture holding have control over a key asset and does not risk losing the land uh, to uh, any external uh, um, uh, uh, does not lose uh, does not uh, risk losing the land in the short or medium term. Um, Evidence uh, has shown us that farmers tend to be less productive as they are reluctant to invest if they have limited access to and control of economic resources, particularly, particularly land. So the way the sustainability criteria for this sub-indicator are structured, the farm is assigned green status if the if it has a formal document with the name of the holder or holding on it or has the rights to sell uh, or bequeath any parcel of the holding okay uh, the farm is classified as yellow or acceptable if the holding has a formal document even if the name of the holder of the holding is not on it 
and the farm is classified as red if uh, the, the farm neither has a formal document um, and, and, and it has no rights to sell or bequeath any parcel of the land, then we classify it as, it as red. In terms of the Bangladesh uh, testing exercise, holding one respondent to the question, yes, we do have a formal document, and yes, we do have our name on, the, on that formal document, and we have the right to sell and we have the right to bequeath and hence we assigned it a green status or desirable status. The second holding, they responded to the question, yes, we do have a formal document. We don't have the, the name of the holder or the holding on the document and we don't have any rights to sell or right to bequeath, but hence because of the fact that they have a formal document, we classify them as acceptable. And holding 51, they neither have the formal document and hence uh, they, you know, uh, all the other questions uh, regarding related to as to whether their name is on it um, is, is, is not relevant as well. They don't have any rights to sell it or any rights to bequeath it and hence uh, uh, this holding is, uh, is classified as, uh, as unsustainable. Again, once we, once we classify the farms and as agriculture area based on the set of questions that we asked to the holder uh, in relation to as to whether they have a formal document and as to whether the name of the holder or the holding is on uh, to whether they have the right to sell or bequeath any parcel of the land they will be assigned green yellow and red statuses and once these green yellow and red statuses are assigned then we add up the area classified as green yellow and red and, and divided by the total uh, agriculture land area to arrive at the proportions uh, for this particular certificate. And with this, I come to an end uh, of, uh, of my presentation on the, on the framework of SDG 241. If you have any further questions related to any of the sub indicator i mean please don't hesitate to write to us using the email address scg 241 indicator at fao.org and we will be very happy to to answer your questions and address your concerns uh, that may that you may have so thank you very much thank you spanjar in this session, we will cover in detail the data collection tools that have been developed by, by FAO to support countries in their data collection and reporting efforts on SDG 241. Uh, as highlighted yesterday and today, um, the focus of SDG 241 is to assess the sustainability of farm holdings and its agricultural land area. Thus, farm surveys offers an opportunity for collecting data through a single instrument for SDG 241. Now, the decision uh, to use farm survey is in line with country efforts, which are supported, of course, by FAO, to develop farm survey as the most uh, um, relevant or appropriate tool for generating agriculture statistics. The choice of farm survey in case of, uh, or in context of 241 was made because of the following reasons. Farm surveys does exist in countries in one shape or form or another to collect data on different aspects of uh, agriculture, uh, not only for SDG monitoring, but for many other, for many other purposes, like say, for example, to uh, collect data to report on uh, value addition for a gross domestic product estimation. Um, the use of farm survey will help collect information on all 11 sub indicators using one data collection instruments. Thus, it avoids the additional work of integrating information coming from different data sources that are usually managed by different institutions or organizations within country. Uh, plus, using the farm surveys, all information will be collected from holdings selected through a nationally representative sample thus avoiding the problem associated with the use of, uh, of different uh, data sources. And plus, uh, farm survey uh, are expected to be cost effective in comparison, in comparison to putting in place monitoring systems 
such as soil and water sampling and laboratory testing, glo uh, geographic information systems, and robust uh, administrative uh, record systems. Um, how farm surveys are well suited to measure the economic dimension of sustainability. It may not be an ideal tool for measuring the environmental and social sustainability of the holding. Uh, typically, uh, and we have been getting this response uh, quite often, that environmental impacts of agriculture are measured through monitoring systems like remote sensing, soil and water sampling, or other tools associated with a specific area rather than within a single agriculture holding. Um, in addition, we also understand that for several environmental themes, it is unlikely that farmers would be able to assess the environmental impact of their farming practices. Um, uh, for example, issues like fertilizer pollution or pesticides use. So using farm survey instead of uh, environmental monitoring systems, therefore in, implies moving away from measuring outcome or impacts to assessing farmers practices uh, and behaviors. Similarly, the information uh, in the social dimension um, is generally captured through household surveys. Uh, while in majority of the cases, agriculture farm holdings are closely associated with a given household, this is not always the case. And therefore care must be given to capturing the information through uh, dedicated service designs. Having said that, the methodological note of SG241 does offer the countries the flexibility of using combination of different data sources other than farm surveys, uh, which we call the uh, alternative, uh, alternative data sources. So the way the indicator is designed now, uh, the, the way the methodology of the indicator 241 is designed now, we are offering uh, three solutions. Um, of which the first two are developed fully. The second one on alternative data sources uh, is the work that we have undertaken now and will be developed towards the, uh, fully towards the end of 2021. So for the farm survey approach, we have developed a standalone farm survey questionnaire model that I will uh, uh, show you in a bit. It is designed as a module that contains the minimum set of questions needed to collect information uh, on SDG 241 to assess the sustainability performances of the farm. Now, it can be administered uh, um, as well um, independently uh, or attached as a separate uh, module or integrated at appropriate places within the existing, uh, existing uh, farm survey currently in place at the country level. The second approach that we have developed is uh, the flagship uh, project of uh, FAO called the Agri Survey Program and 50 by 2030 initiative. We were supposed to cover this today, but as Sifania mentioned, we move this presentation to tomorrow. So we will, I will touch upon this, but in detail we will, uh, we will cover this in more detail tomorrow. Um, another thing, uh, alternative data sources I briefly talked about. Uh, the methodological note of SDG 241 uh, does refer uh, and allow countries the flexibility to use alternative data sources, that is um, earth observation, geographical information system, remote sensing, administrative records, household survey monitoring system and censuses, but that approach is not yet fully developed. We are working on that and the moment it is uh, translated into guidelines, hopefully by next year, as I mentioned earlier, we will, we will share that with, with, with the countries. So as I was mentioning earlier, the standalone survey questionnaire is designed as a module, uh, which contains uh, the set of questions needed to assess uh, SDG 241 uh, uh, sub-indicators. It can be administered independently or attached as a separate module or integrated at appropriate places within the existing farm surveys. We have uh, cognitively tested the questionnaire model in Max and uh, Rwanda back in uh, 2017 and 18. Of course, uh, 
uh, the objective was to refine the survey questionnaire from the design flow uh, comprehension uh, respondent recall and judgment perspective um, uh, and then you know an additional objective was to assess if the questions asked are sufficient and fully understood by a limited number of heterogeneous uh, heterogeneous respondents uh, and based on the feedback that we got through these uh, tests um, to revise the proposed criteria, determine the time of the survey, revise the data scripts and routines, and uh, revise accordingly the methodological note and, uh, and, and support document. Uh, for, for this uh, particular uh, standalone survey questionnaire that I will show you in a bit, we have also uh, tested it in Bangladesh, and you saw the results uh, in, in the previous uh, presentation, uh, where uh, we uh, collected data to test the sustainability criteria, and you know assess the time, as I mentioned, and revise the support documents. The survey questionnaire is uh, divided into five sections. Of course, we start with uh, with an introductory section. Then the second uh, section focus on the area of the holding. The third section cover the, the three sub indicators in the economic dimension. The fourth uh, section cover the five indicators in the environmental dimension. And, uh, and the fifth uh, section cover the, uh, all the questions in the, in, the, in the social dimension. So let me just quickly show you the, the survey module. So, so this is the SDG 241 uh, survey model that I was uh, talking about. Uh, as you can see here, it can be administered in its own right as a standalone survey on SDG 241. But what we recommend to countries is to go through this survey and then uh, in the light of this survey, analyze their current agriculture surveys, which are already in place at the country level and see as to what questions are missing and then uh, integrate questions from, from this module into their agriculture survey uh, so that uh, uh, those uh, are able to report on SDG 241. So as you can see here, section one is on the introduction to the survey module and identification of the holder, uh, of the holding and the holder. Then section two is on the area of the holding and all the, uh, the aspects that we covered in the in the very first presentation related to SG two four one, related to how do we estimate agricultural land area can be can be collected through these questions. Then we have questions related to the economic dimension of the holding. Questions related to the environmental dimensions of the holding. It covers the five sub indicators in that dimension. And questions related to the social dimension of the holding. So it provides you with a very good starting point whereby you can see as to where the gaps are in terms of the questions which are already uh, part of your current agriculture surveys. You can see as to what is missing and then you start integrating questions from here into your agriculture survey to make it STG241 ready. So I provided you with a link to this questionnaire, which is already available on FAO SDG 241 dedicated web page. Not only um, the, the survey questionnaire, but all the support documents that I will now go in a bit 
um, uh, you can you can go there and uh, download it and familiarize yourself with with all the support documents so the support documents for h 241 contains a numerator manual um, the instruction manual for data interoperation and analysis guidelines on data analysis to compute the sub indicators sampling guide guidance for sg241 and fao statistical toolkit which comprise of a code book tabulation plan and modular status scripts to support data analysis so let me go into each one of them one by one so the enumerator manual has been developed to train the enumerators surveyors uh, and supervisors before their field deployment to administer the questionnaire that I just showed you. Uh, it provides the definition of the key terms, concepts, and the meaning behind the questions asked. Um, it provides guidance on the use of skip questions and filter questions, and provide examples of commonly encountered instances where questions and responses may not be easy to administer or record uh, appropriately. Then we have uh, instruction manual on data interoperations, which has also been developed and available online. Um, it describes the data interoperations, that is all the steps that must be performed in order to organize the collected data into uh, Excel spreadsheets or other statistical package, whether it's uh, SPSS or R or Strata. Then it provides guidance on the procedures to process and analyze data collected and construct the 11 sub indicators according to the dashboard approach, which we covered as part of the previous presentation. One important point that I would like to highlight is that basically this document assumes that the enumerators and data analysts are familiar with the survey questionnaire and the methodology of SG241 respectively. If not, enumerators and data analysts are strongly um, uh, encouraged to carefully read and get familiar with the with the, with the uh, aforementioned documents before proceeding with with uh, with reading of uh, of uh, the instruction manual on uh, on data entry operations. Then we have also developed guidelines on data analysis and um, and reporting. Um, so it is primarily used by data producers and data users alike. It's meant for um, government data and statistics authorities, uh, the private sector, civil society, research and other organization that generate and or use data and statistics for calculating the sub indicator of SG241. It also provides the different steps that are needed for calculation of the thresholds and the final reporting of the 11 sub indicator as, uh, as a dashboard. Apart from this, I mean, we have also developed this document uh, which provide uh, sampling guidance on SG241. This document covers um, the sample size, sampling unit and frames, who are the reporting units, estimation domains, uh, sampling design estimator and stratification variables that we have been talking about, like say, for example, household and non-household, uh, crops, livestock, and mixed, and irrigated and non-irrigated and non-irrigated agricultural area, um, sample allocation and stratas, and other issues related to SG241 uh, sample selection. As mentioned earlier, we have also developed an e-learning course. Uh, that pro provide information on the key aspects of the indicator that is scope and coverage dimension themes and sub indicators periodicity data reporting data collection and reporting etc so if if you still need to go through um, the e-learning course or this training uh, it is also available online and uh, you can you can go through the course and uh, familiarize yourself uh, uh, more with the with the indicator 
Here are the support documents that I just mentioned. All these are available online on the SDG webpage. So let me just show it to you. So, so this is the SDG 241 uh, web page, which is regularly updated by, by, by us. And here you can see all the relevant documents that I just spoke about, the metadata, the methodological note. One, one more important point that I would like to highlight is that th this methodological note has already been tr uh, translated into Arabic. Uh, Spanish, French. so plus the FAO questionnaire that Stefania will go through in, in the next session, plus the survey questionnaire that I just showed you. It's also available in Arabic, Spanish, and French. The sampling guidance for SCG 241, guidance on data analysis and reporting, instruction manual on data entry operations, and enumerator manual. Uh, for the farm survey module that I just showed you. Apart from this, you can see all the activities that we have undertaken for SDG 241. So the virtual trainings uh, that are, uh, you know, that are in progress now. So all the information about these virtual trainings plus uh, previous, uh, our previous uh, capacity development initiatives or activities uh, uh, back in uh, 2019 and uh, and before that. The e-learning course is available here. So you can simply click here and go to the e-learning course and refresh your concepts. And plus other major documents. Um, if you want to get to know more about sustainability in agriculture, then um, it will give you a very broader view uh, of the of the sustainability issues. So here again are the documents. I'm not going to go through this because I covered it in detail and showed you as to where these are. We will provide you with the link that we have already provided you. But uh, you know, uh, again, for your information, all these documents are freely available online. Same documents. So this is the first option that we have. Survey designed around the methodology of SDG 241 along with all these support documents. The second option that we have developed is basically uh, um, uh, we, we wanted to leverage and capitalize on agri survey program, which is soon to be scaled up into 50 by 2030 initiative that, uh, that is a flagship program of uh, FAO and it is supported as well by World Bank and uh, IFAD. Uh, that aims to support 50 lower and low middle income countries with the survey program by, by 2030. Now for, for this particular project, what we have done is we analyze the survey instruments of the, both the agri survey program and the 50 by 2030 initiative. And we then uh, isolate and identify the questions that are missing in the survey instruments of these two program uh, from the point of view of SDG 241, we integrated those questions and hence uh, now both these initiative, um, which, which will support 50 countries by 2030 um, are SDG 241 ready. So for agri survey program, we have uh, integrated the questions into the core module and the economy and uh, production methods and environment modules of the agri survey program and for 50 by 2030 initiative we have uh, um, added the questions into the uh, production method and environment module of the 50 by 2030 initiative 
I'm not going to go into detail of, uh, of this particular slide because it's going to be covered at length by my colleague, Mr. Flavio Bolliger, uh, tomorrow. So here are the supporting documents related to Agri Survey Program and 50 by 2030 initiative. Now, the option three that uh, I, I mentioned to you that it's still under elaboration uh, is uh, the methodological note of SDG 241. Uh, I assume that you have read the note. You may have seen this table, you know, towards the very end of the methodological note, whereby the, me the methodology offers country the flexibility to use alternative data sources. Uh, however, several aspects need to be carefully considered prior to using, you know, uh, existing alternative data sources in order to produce consistent, reliable data as per recommended periodicity. It is advised that the use of alternative data sources may be considered when available data set fulfill the criteria that I will show you on the next slide. But here are some of the potential data sources that can be used for the 11 sub-indicator of SG241. So currently we have developed this approach fully. And for this, uh, I have shown you the, not only the survey questionnaire, but the support documents as well. And now currently at FAO, we are working on how to leverage these other data sources, potential uh, data sources to report on, on, on the respective sub-indicators. So as, uh, as I mentioned, that the use of alternative data sources uh, is conditional on the fact as to whether these uh, data sets fulfill the following criteria. First of all, it should be demonstrated that alternative data sources gives results of uh, at least same quality as the surveys or, um, or, or, the, or the farm surveys and ensure international comparability. It can be reflected in or attributed to agricultural land area in the country considering different uh, farm typologies and uh, agricultural regions. It can be associated with uh, countries' agricultural production systems, particularly crops and livestock and, uh, and, and its mix. It should capture the same aspect or phenomena as proposed in the farm survey as described in the sub-indicator metadata sheets uh, with at least uh, um, uh, same uh, quality considering uh, the st scientific standard that we just spoke about. Um, plus these uh, alternative data sources, uh, it needs to be checked as to whether these are representative of the situation at the national level with respect to agriculture land area, taking into account uh, the main agriculture uh, uh, region types. And uh, we need to also check as to whether these are compliance with international um, uh, and national standards and classification systems in order to ensure that the indicators um, is uh, international. We all need to make sure that the data are available at the same level of territorial disaggregation as from survey um, and, and the data collection year and periodicity are homogeneous across the, across the sub-indicators. One important point that I would like to highlight is that using different data sources, um, if countries decide on doing so, to report on different sub-indicator of SG241, implies that mechanism should be put in place at the country level to coordinate regularly the flow of required information generated by various institutions to the National Statistical Office. Now, alternative data sources can be used to complement uh, and uh, validate farm surveys uh, data. Uh, this combined approach has the potential to improve the validity and soundness of the results, in particularly in countries that have well-established monitoring systems um, and that are able to produce quality information consistently over time. Um, the information from other sources may be used and leveraged in different ways depending on the quality and regularity of its, uh, of its collection. So just to give you an example, the alternative data sources can be used to replace farm survey questions 
when alternative data sources of information are available and respond to the criteria mentioned um, uh, on the previous slide. Um, the alternative data sources can also complement farm survey questions by providing additional contextual information helpful uh, to interpret the survey results. As well, uh, these alternative data sources can be used to cross check the farm survey results to identify any inconsistencies and ensure the robustness of the indicator. This validation exercise can be done ex post um, uh, or during the data collection by providing the external data to the enumerators before going to the field. In this way, the enumerators can probe whether the responses to the farm survey questions are consistent with the uh, a priori external knowledge. In any case, um, it is recommended that countries complement the farm survey with uh, other sources of information, that is uh, monitoring systems um, uh, for soil, water, fertilizer, pesticide pollution, biodiversity, etc. Um, this will provide additional information and help cross-checking the robustness of SG241 with regards to the environmental dimension of sustainability. And I will uh, I will stop here, Stefania. So if we can start again. Uh, so now we have uh, a presentation on the uh, SDG 2.4.1 data collection questionnaire. We have seen so far uh, all the theoretical parts and notions with Aspanjar and the data collection tools. Now let's move to another practical part. So I will show you now how FAO gets the data uh, on the SDG 241 from the countries, meaning uh, the questionnaire, which you have, uh, uh, you must have all received on August 10th of this year, and that was expected to be sent back to us by the 30th of September this year now i have a problem with the okay so we have one single questionnaire that comes in excel format it is indeed uh, the key instrument to collect uh, the data from countries it covers all the three dimensions and the 11 sub indicators that we have seen yesterday and today it is sent to countries once a year even if we have seen that the periodicity of the 241 indicator is three years. But in this way, we can uh, monitor the availability of data on an annual basis, since it is a very brand new indicator. We can, oh, sorry, we can identify changes and get the data uh, points through the years, considering also that often we do not get many data, the data especially now that we are at the starting phase. Assess the country needs in terms of capacity development, for example, uh, technical assistance and training on SDG 241, exactly how we did for this uh, virtual training. And lastly, confirm the national focal points contact, which is always a crucial information for us that we are in contact immediately with the appropriate person. What we have done so far. We have tested the questionnaire in 45 countries through a pilot exercise carried out from December 2019 to April 2020. I'm going to show you the results of this pilot test right after this presentation. Uh, initially, the question was only in English. We have translated in, uh, it in July 2020 into three official UN languages, as Pandeyar showed this uh, uh, Two minutes ago. So we translated this in Arabic, French, and Spanish. Then we have had our first official dispatch, as I mentioned, on August 10th to 203 countries, including your countries, of course. The questionnaire has been sent to the SDG uh, 2.4.1 focal point and uh, to the generic SDG focal point and to the head of NSO with copy all FAO offices and the relevant people. 
the, as I said, the deadline for sending the questionnaire back was set to September 30th. The next activity uh, will be to translate into the remaining, uh, or remaining official UN languages all the documents, so in Chinese and Russian. Here it is shown how the question is organized, so it is composed by eight worksheets. We have three introductory sections, the cover page, the instructions, and the definitions. Then we have three data reporting sections, one for each dimension that we have seen, and we have two supplementary information sections for the metadata and feedback. We are going to see all these three sections uh, in, uh, uh, in detail uh, in a minute. This is just a preview on how the question is displayed. So you can see here below all the different sheets uh, that are in the Excel uh, file. So let's see in details these eight sections. The first one, as I said, the cover page, uh, asks uh, country-specific information, meaning the national focal point contact details. Uh, that I said for us is really a key information for having a smooth communication with the countries. Then there is a page with only instructions on how to complete the questionnaires. So it gives also an overview of the questionnaire uh, structure. And followed by another page that explains the definition of the key concept uh, and the terms uh, and the international standards uh, used uh, in the questionnaire. The second uh, section, as I said, is uh, the core actually of the questionnaire because it's uh, where the data are requested, uh, meaning where the country uh, will fill the spaces with their data. This includes the three dimensions. We saw uh, the three sub-indicators for the economics, the five for environmental, and the three sub-indicators for the uh, social dimensions. And this is how it is displayed, so for the three dimensions. Then the last section, as I said, it's about supplementary information, so the metadata part. While it's intuitive, it collects the metadata on the country coverage, on the source of data, unit of measurements, frequency of data collection, and so on. And finally, the feedback sheet, that is simply a survey with 10 questions uh, that help us understanding if some area uh, may need some improvements. So let me now show you how to fill uh, properly uh, this Excel. The first page, the cover page, is like this one. You need to fill the column with the national focal point contact details, even if this is already been uh, sent to us in the past, because this will help us understand if the focal point has been confirmed or if uh, uh, he or she has been changed. About that, uh, these are the focal points details that we have for your countries. Uh, so we kindly ask you uh, to let us know if you know uh, if there have been any changes, in particular maybe uh, for United Arab Emirates and South Africa. Uh, we still miss the nominations and also the focal points institutions. While for Russia, uh, as I said before here, and Belarus, uh, we know the focal institution, but we still need to have the contact names. So especially for these countries, we ask uh, if you can confirm and let us know uh, if there are any news on the uh, nomination of the focal points. And for the others, please let us know if there has been any change. For the three data reporting, reporting sections, you have two columns to fill. So the first columns need to be filled with the values following these criteria. So we ask only one year. So you should report the most recent uh, uh, year that is available in your country. The reference that we use is the calendar year from January to December. And uh, uh, the third criteria is if there is no data available in your country, you should insert zero if it is not occurring, but potentially applicable. 
while you should state NA, so not applicable, if it is really not applicable at all. In this second column, uh, which is the notes, you should insert explanations in case the data are reporting using a different national definitions, so not the ones described in the definition worksheets that comes before this, or if the data are reporting using a different reference period, so not the calendar year from December to January to December. And here also, you can specify the exact year that the data are referring to. So if you have filled the first column with the values, here in the note, you write uh, the year. This last point actually applies to this collection cycle, since we are not sure for which year you may have data. And this is also to facilitate the coordination, uh, sorry, the collection of all currently available data. So maybe for one subindicators, you might have uh, uh, last year, uh, for example, the 2015. Uh, which is still good for us, but it's important to underline it. Uh, in future, uh, FAO typically collects data for specific years, so usually it's the last four or five years, and I would say that probably this question will include such options in the coming years once, of course, the process uh, becomes more established. The metadata sections is composed by a table, with all the 11 subindicators listed and columns where you can specify all these metadata listed here. So type of a variable, availability, unit of measurement, and so on. And last one, the feedback. We have uh, six questions with the scale response from strongly agree to strongly disagree. And we have also four open questions uh, in case you want to tell us something more in detail and it's uh, really open questions. That's all for uh, as far as the data collection question is concerned. I will uh, now uh, show you the real, uh, uh, so let me, the real questionnaire. For participants, okay. So you should see the Excel, right? I still have doubts because I always get the strange message. Uh, Aspandia, maybe you want to confirm you see the Excel? Yes, yes we, we can do. see it. Can okay, see it. okay. Thank you. Because I, I also yesterday I got a strange message and I don't know what does it mean. Okay, so you see uh, all what I said. You have uh, this first cover page where uh, as part of what I already said, you have also here below uh, the structure of the quest, of the Excel, and also some uh, um, details that might be relevant. So for example, our contact details in case you want to tell us something, the deadline that was set, uh, as I said, at the end of September. The instruction, the instruction is, uh, um, so comes uh, in, in this format, with some uh, uh, information and also explains the structure uh, of the questionnaire. And here in detail, you have all the section what they are about. Definition, I would say, is the longest part because you have uh, really everything that might be useful for you for filling the questionnaire. So when you have any doubt, you go here, you have, for example, you see uh, general terms, then you have explanation and details on the denominator of the indicator. And then, so you go down and you have all the sub-indicators divided by dimension. So you go down, you have the second sub-indicators, et cetera. So you can really have many information before uh, maybe uh, wondering uh, anything specific. You go here and you just read and try to find all the information that you want to, or you, you need to know. Then, as I said, we have these three, the economic, the environmental, and the social. They, are all, they have all the same structures. So, as I said, you have here the uh, sustainability status that Sfandia explained deeply in these two days. 
the unit of measurement, of course, and then you have the two columns described. All are divided by the in sub indicators. So you have three for the economic, and then you have the five for the environmental, and the three for social. So it should be quite straightforward. The metadata also is a quite long sheet because even here it's divided by sub indicators. So you see the green. Uh, separate the different sub indicators, and you have all these different uh, columns where you can insert whatever you have for let us know, of course, uh, uh, the information available in your country. And finally, the feedback section, as I said, you see you have six uh, easy questions. You can still uh, anyway specify something concerning that question if you want to tell us uh, something more and then uh, open questions including additional suggestions so in case you want to help us improving uh, more and more uh, uh, these questionnaires this questionnaire um, that's all uh, please let us know if you have any questions because this is as i said this is what you are requested to fill. Okay. So uh, the next presentation, as I said, it's about the pilot testing uh, uh, of the questionnaires that we have just uh, uh, seen. So why we have carried out this pilot phase? What were the, the objectives? So the main scope was to collect test data from 45 pilot countries using uh, uh, the SDG 241 questionnaires. Specifically, we wanted to understand the availability of data, although we already knew that the availability of data in 2019 would have been low. Assess the feasibility of data collection, understand the country readiness in terms of existing national statistical processes, and availability of data relevant to sustainable agriculture. To sustainable agriculture. And of course, testing uh, the questionnaire itself. So its structure and clarity. And finally, also evaluate the country needs in terms of capacity development and technical support. As I said, especially uh, we organized this training uh, um, after we have received these uh, results. How we have selected uh, this uh, uh, 45, uh, um, oh no, sorry. So as I mentioned, the pilot test was launched in the December 2019. There has been a coordination and discussion with several countries, and we finally uh, prepared the report with all the results in May 2020. Please uh, note that we had some countries that replied after that uh, uh, time. So we received the questionnaire after uh, May 2020. And unfortunately, they were not part of the final report. So we will not see uh, data, uh, data in this presentation. So how we have selected these uh, 45 countries, as I said? We had uh, four big criteria. Some countries contributed to the SDG 241 methodological development and refinement. So information, inform, informal working groups carried out mostly during 2019. And these countries were Argentina, Brazil, Canada, Chile, France, Russian Federation, and United States. Then other participated in uh, previous uh, uh, national pilot testing. So Bangladesh, Ecuador, Kenya, Kyrgyz Republic, Mexico, and Rwanda, or participated also in national and regional trainings. So Fiji, Malaysia, Vietnam, Oman, Algeria, Egypt, Ethiopia, Malawi, Cameroon, India, Indonesia, and Pakistan. Then we selected some countries that are or will be part of the Agri-Survey Program or the 50 by 2030 initiative. These are uh, Nepal, Burkina Faso, Ivory Coast, Ghana, Mali, Uganda, Senegal, Cambodia, Georgia, Armenia, and Kazakhstan. And finally, there were other selected countries, 
which are Belgium, Germany, Italy, UK, Austria, Norway, Sweden, Ireland, Trinidad and Tobago. Note that some of these countries just mentioned, uh, the ones that are red columns, were members of the Interagency and Expert Group on Sustainable Development Goals Indicators. Now let's move to the results of the pilot test. So what we have got uh, with this exercise, I would call this uh, uh, the pilot test in numbers. So we had uh, 32 countries that acknowledged the receipt of the questionnaire, which were 71% of the whole countries. We have received 24 countries, uh, questionnaires back. They were filled uh, completely or partially. Um, so this was 53%, so just a little bit more than a half, which was anyway quite uh, an interesting result for us. We had 20 questionnaires that were filled with the survey, survey section. I will show you which, what is about this section in a minute. And the same 20 field questions, uh, re questionnaire received with the feedback sections filled. Among the 24 countries that sent the questionnaire back, seven of them provided actual data, which is 60%, while the three stated uh, that they didn't have any data uh, for the moment, which is the 7%. I said that we had seven countries with, uh, that provided actual data, and these are the seven countries. So Canada, uh, which will present their experience uh, immediately after my presentation uh, today. We had UK also, Indonesia and Norway that provided quite a lot of data using uh, uh, existing data, proxies and expert judgment. UK also used uh, anecdotal knowledge. Burkina Faso and Malawi provided one sub-indicators each, and Kazakhstan provided partial data on three sub-indicators. Other respondents that didn't report any data anyway highlighted that some data were available or partially available for some sub-indicators, and thus were unable to report on the sub-indicators or uh, its subset. Probably, Anyway, in the next uh, years, we will get actual data also from uh, uh, these countries. This is the situation of data availability by sub-indicators. Uh, we consider the 24 countries, which are the ones that sent uh, uh, the questionnaires back, of course. So in general, we can see that the data availability is low or partial for most of the sub-indicators. I would like here to stress the importance to respond with any data you have. Really, at this stage, it is as no. to begin reporting uh, with partial or even by using proxies, as some country also have done. So you can see that uh, okay. this is uh, uh, yeah. really a key aspect for us. And in this slide, it is shown how also the proxy and the partial data are important for us, uh, especially, as I said, at this uh, starting phase. For this pilot exercise, we see that in general, data is not available. Uh, I would say especially for the sub-indicators in the environmental and uh, the social dimension. Uh, we can easily see that indeed, the least reported are uh, uh, the prevalence of soil degradation the management of pesticides, and the wage rate in agriculture, and also the fees indicator. Possibly, I imagine, because this kind of information are not usually collected in agricultural surveys or, or census, and even if uh, some basic data are collected at country level, the two-for-one methodology requires specific and additional information for the compilation and reporting on all this, uh, of all these uh, sub-indicators. Instead, uh, through this chart, we can also see that the most reported are uh, the risk mitigation mechanism and the secure uh, tenure um, 
flight to land. Here is visualized the specific overview of the data availability of your countries for the 11 indicators. This, of course, takes in consideration only the countries that were part of the, of the pilot test. Uh, this is why we have here only Armenia, Burkina Faso, Malawi, and Oman. So we can see that Malawi stated to have available or partial available data for four sub indicators out of the 11, but they provided data only on one sub indicator. Um, on two sub indicators, sorry. Uh, Burkina uh, provided data on one sub indicator. And finally, Oman stated to have uh, available data for one sub indicators, but they didn't provide any data on it. In the legend, the legend uh, you see also the orange colors, which refer to the methodology not clear, and the violet color, uh, since, of course, other countries informed us uh, also uh, to have uh, data available, but through proxy. Uh, which is, as I said, absolutely a very important information anyway. Uh, we will talk about this uh, uh, later. Analyzing the answers given by the countries, we managed to understand something more specific about a uh, uh, few of the subindicators. Specifically, the subindicators farm outward value per hectare and variation in water availability are the ones where further clarity on methodology was required. The ones that have low data availability are prevalence of soil degradation, where 18 countries did not have data to calculate it. Wage rate, of agriculture, wage rate in agriculture, 19 countries did not have data to calculate. And food and the fees indicator 20 countries uh, out of the 24, eh? all these uh, numbers are out of the 24 countries, responded that did not have data to calculate it. Uh, use uh, of agrobiodiversity supportive practice apparently is the sub indicators where information is available, but usually only partially. While for the sub indicators, segregated tenure rights to land, the data situation is relatively good. We imagine this is due to the reason that the information on land tenure is usually collected using census. In fact, in this case, nine countries had actual data and only one through uh, proxy. Let's go now to uh, the short survey section. So this section is not present anymore in the questionnaire. Uh, so the ones that the one that you have received uh, in August, we use this section only for the pilot phase. It included a series of questions that help us uh, assess the country data collection methods, their sources, coverage, the scope and periodicity, technical assistance needs, and so on. As I said, 20 country here uh, responded. So out of the 24 that sent the questionnaire back, we have asked if the countries was already reporting on indicator on sustainable agriculture, and six countries, so 30%, replied that they currently use proxies. In particular, we had uh, Germany that stated to report to organically farmed agricultural land. We had Italy that said reporting percentage of utilized agricultural area under organic farming, and Sweden, Sweden used the proxy organic area. 100% um, of the countries stated to have agricultural census in place, and 13 uh, will have it uh, uh, by next year, so uh, very soon. 60 countries, which is 80%, have an agricultural survey in place, and 12 of them, so 84%, will have the next round in the, couple, uh, in the next couple of years. So we really hope to have uh, quite a lot of information through these census and surveys uh, in the next years. About the coverage of surveys and census, nine countries for the survey and seven for the census, cover both 
crop and livestock, other social and environmental aspects, aspects all together in the same uh, survey phase. Then we have investigated on the technical assistance needed uh, for producing and compiling uh, the two for one indicator. 70%, so we were, which were 14 countries, responded that they needed uh, assistance. Among them, among them 7, 57% stated to need this assistance in the short term, 36 in the medium. That is uh, one of the reasons why we have organized quite quickly these virtual trainings to respond to these uh, uh, country needs. Only two countries are out of the 20 already received technical support and none stated that the indicator is not applicable for the countries. So which means that the 241 indicator is a very relevant uh, worldwide. Concerning the feedback section, here we can see in one chart all the questions asked and they answered through uh, the scale from strongly agree to strongly disagree. We can easily see that the question number one and the question five were the questions where countries were more in agreement. Uh, so we have sent the question questionnaire to the right person and no important questions, categories and or commodities were missing. While question number three and question number six were the ones where countries were more in disagreement so not all the definitions were completely clear and the time required to fill the questionnaire was uh, quite long. Finally, analyzing the open answers, uh, uh, we realized that countries found the SDG 241 methodology challenging in general, that they needed more guidance on the conversation into actors in aggregating and disaggregating results and in maybe clearly instructions and definition. We already saw that the lack of data availability and the lack of time series at country level was quite high. Moreover, the countries indicated two challenges to indicators, net farm income and use of agrobiodiversity supportive practice. And finally, we had uh, some suggestions, which, which indeed we took immediately in consideration they were to organize the trainings, and we did it, and evaluate the possibility of using alternative data sources, which is exactly uh, what we have started. So on this last slide, we have highlighted uh, some conclusions and next steps. Although the low response rates uh, and the low availability of data, there is a high level of interest from all the countries to implement the, two for one, the SDG 241, and we definitely understood that there is a need for capacity development assistance. Looking at the next steps, uh, so underlined in the report of this uh, uh, pilot phase, as I already mentioned before, we have translated the material in Arabic, Spanish, and French. We have completed the first dispatch uh, in August this year. And in progress, we are still in the phase of collecting data, making analysis, gap filling, and quality assurance and quality control processes. We have just uh, we have just finished actually the virtual trainings because you are the the third <coughs> sorry you, you are the third and the last group for this uh, year. Uh, we are planning to have other virtual training also in 2021 to cover more countries and we are also investigating already on the use uh, of the alternative data sources so this is also something that we will complete in uh, 2021 thank you i give now the floor to martin bolio martin is uh, currently manager of the agricultural commodity program at statistics canada he started to work at StatCan in 1991, and over the years, he worked in several programs related to crop, livestock, financial, taxation, and census of agriculture. 
He was also manager of the new agri-environmental surveys on farm practices and water management. As mentioned during my presentation a while ago, he will now present the Canada experience in the SDG 241 data collection and reporting. Martin, the floor is yours. Uh, good, good day. Uh, Stefania, I will let you, if please, you can uh, sure. put, put the presentation on. And, uh, and uh, uh, this was very interesting, actually, the, what I want to say about, I should have, it would have been great before we start answering the pilot survey, if we had your first presentation, because it would, I think it would have uh, even helped us to, to, to better, to provide a better answer, but it's never too late because we're still looking at, as you see in my presentation, as a, a way to improve the reply because in several places we use a, we use a proxy, but uh, we're, even if we use proxy, we're pretty confident that uh, we had good, good, uh, we still good, good, show good result. Um, so even for a, a, a rich, uh, in terms of data, we are Statistic Canada is pretty rich in terms of uh, holding and having a census of agriculture every five years and having a taxation, taxation access to taxation data for all farms. Uh, we, uh, me and my colleague from uh, there are two departments. Uh, we're responsible for statistics, but the uh, the Department of Agriculture as well, uh, who are experts in the in the field of, uh, especially the uh, environmental, uh, uh, help me to to complete the questionnaire. So, uh, you can go to the next slide, please. So. So yeah, quickly we'll review the, the uh, I, I won't spend too much time because I, I think the questionnaire itself is pretty well developed. Uh, we, uh, and Stefania actually uh, presentation where I showed that today. Uh, we, what, what we answer as well is we really want to align with FAO methodology, uh, even if we have data limitation in some place so for some sub indicator. And the reason why is that uh, we, we believe that when you start, you want to compare result across country, whether you're a de developing country or developed countries, it, I think it will be quite important to to, even if the methodology may not seem perfect, but at least it's a good starting point. Uh, next slide, please. So you you got all the dimension. We already talked about it. Uh, uh, one of the, the issue we may sometime add is was how to get the data from farm levels. Uh, data to an aggregate to a, a higher level and uh, and even then in it's, it's creates some uh, some question uh, as i said the surf we had some we're fortunate we have a census we have a farm management survey um, yeah you can and the periodicity is a uh, uh, the indicator every three months for us it would be quite a challenge because uh, the base of the report is really uh, some sub indicator it would be possible almost every year like the financial one but the uh, environmental one will be because it's based on the census of agriculture so uh, even some results were, were based on the 2011 because we didn't have be better scientific information to to report so and um, so the next one will be able to do it it's after we have a census in 2021 next year and data will be available in in may 2022 so 
uh, I think, and the periodicity of three years for us is, is won't be uh, realistic. And we like the, the dashboard uh, reporting the indicator as a dashboard. Next slide, please. Uh, so yes, I said metric. Um, so we we basically wherever we didn't have the data, we so we look at other data source. And uh, sometime I think we have to go at uh, even get satellite data or especially for the land cover data. And it's where you can see there's some change that could affect some uh, some sub environmental uh, indicator. Uh, diversity, I think my next uh, two slides will show you what uh, kind of uh, challenge, I won't say, yeah, challenge it, it, it is for, for a large country like, like Canada and how to extrapolate survey result to, uh, and uh, all, we always have a challenge to limit uh, response burden. So, we over the last i think since 2012 we we want to minimize the number of questionnaires that are sent to farmers uh, we uh, there they they have uh, sometime it could be for poll it for it could be from university students it could be research it could be from a different level of government so they they they're really uh, tired with survey, but in general, they're good parts spent to, to our survey conduct by Statistic Canada. Next slide, please. So just to still is illustrate the diversity of, uh, of uh, the, like, it's a large country, but it's not all under agriculture. So out of the, close to a billion hectare. We have just total farmland is 64.2 million hectare. And most it's in the, the tree, the, you see the green, it's in the, pre, in the sand prairie province, western provinces. Um, this, the average, it's, uh, it's hectares, it's 332 hectare per farm, but however, they're much more larger. The uh, farms and the distribution is uh, is quite skewed to the to the right because we we have many several small farms, but uh, very few uh, large farms that contribute to most of the production. And in last census, we had uh, under the ninety three thousand farms. Next slide. So, just to give you an idea of the, uh, the also per region, there's different different production that are more important, and those are the the major two or three production in each uh, in each region. So that in itself, it it could create some it does create some challenge to report just for Canada. Next slide, please. And uh, we're fortunate because we also, we have different eco zone and eco region, which are similar. They basically have similar climate, uh, soil type or uh, hydrology and vegetation. So this is this adding up to the mix of uh, when you, again, when you, just to show the diversity and when you start to report just for uh, a national uh, result for a nat national substance of an indicator. So next slide, please. Okay, so I'll uh, go, uh, I'll go from the, uh, I mentioned already these, uh, that uh, uh, the scope is not an issue, was not an issue for us, was doable. For economic, uh, most we have, we, have the, we have data for it. Environmental, we struggle uh, 
That's why we some in some instance we use proxy. And in terms of social, uh, also we either use proxy or expert expert uh, uh, knowledge. So I mentioned response burden. That was a large issue for us. And um, I already mentioned the other point, so we can skip this slide. I will go quickly to, to some slide because you already have or heard about the questionnaire. So, um, so in terms of the economic dimension, the, the the first one was the output value per hectare was pretty straightforward to report because we have data uh, every every five years for from the census of ag uh, agriculture. The um, where it becomes a bit more complicated is the profitability, the net net operator income. Uh, but we're getting much better at 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 uh, linking the administrative data source with the uh, uh, with the uh, census of agriculture, but again, it could there's many change within the five years period. Um, when it comes time to missing, like it's really hard to measure at the farm level the value inventory change or income in kind and depreciation so in that option we we suggest basically that we should use uh, aggregate that you we usually report at uh, at uh, national for national accounts and we use uh, within canada we divide it into uh, province and territory so we can calculate these and for each of these region and report for national account terms of risk mitigation, that was uh, just a fair assumption because here, uh, most farmers have access to credit and insurance and uh, very few, unless they're too small, they don't, they don't take advantage of these, these, these uh, program in place. Uh, next, please. Um, so I mentioned the census. What one year after census, and it's been it start actually since two thousand and one. Uh, we have a it used to be called farm and farm environmental management survey, but now it's the farm management survey. Uh, it's right right a year right after the census. So basically, uh, it allowed us to link the farms that we census and then uh, we got other additional question we don't repeat the same question and also we have uh, I mentioned scientists researchers and uh, for this I encourage you to uh, to have a look at the at the, uh, the the report that's been produced by my colleague from uh, the agriculture, the uh, agriculture department. Uh, next slide, please. So here, uh, it, that's the place I wish I had probably cut and paste from uh, from the questionnaire because it will have also make my presentation the link between the two presentation easier. But between our reply from the pilot and uh, this, but. Uh, uh, you you uh, can go to the next one. So basically, for uh, for different uh, the soil degradation, we had different indicator that was we were able to uh, to to provide estimate. Um, the um, the again this part referred to um, these result refer to we're able to report in Hector because we have pretty good scientific observation on on the field as well so um, but uh, we it's for some region of Canada more than others and then 
so but overall what we reply it was when we we made we had all these measures that it falls under for soil degradation it was acceptable if we following FAO, FAO criteria next one please okay just skip to the next slide please uh, so this question is is basically was also this was actually more straightforward because we we have the question directly on the census of agriculture and the area under irrigation actually the only uh, i would say uh, caution i will put here is that irrigation could change and because from in from one year to the next uh depending of the condition the climate condition um saying that uh, so there's two percent of only two percent of cropland area would need irrigation on more constant basis uh, okay so but it's also just to go back it's also uh, more original uh, it's, it's more related to some regional issues southern part and the, in the western uh, western provinces the southern part uh, next slide please okay you can move to the next one uh, so we look all and here it's where we 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 um, we use a proxy and we just say okay we're talking here we didn't report in hectares we we did report in the terms of percentage of uh, of crop or operation of farm cro farm crop operation farm of crop of farms uh, growing crops and um, however it's uh, with a bit more time we we could maybe revisit this and just to just to compare our our re result will change uh, because by linking uh, the result from the census less census with the for example the with the farm management uh, survey we we could probably convert everything into hectare but it would just require a bit more resource to do it. Next slide. Uh, you can pass, this is all in the questionnaire. So uh, pesticide management, same thing. We, we, uh, we assess that it was accept acceptable. Um, uh, again, in that case, we even we, I put a question mark under the extrapolation. Uh, for sure, we could do a better job, similar as the uh, the one on fertilizer management, because it's always based on number of farms. But uh, we, if we take some assumptions, saying okay, um, uh, a farm that's report. Um, I don't know. Uh, use uh, use bio bio pesticide or use uh, or remove disease plant. Uh, it does it for all his area, so not just for just for a part of his farm. So we assume that we could assume that practice is is used for the whole whole operation. Okay, next. Please, thank you. Just skip. Agri environmental. Um, we don't have that many farms that are officially certified organic, um, and um, it's uh, and the reason for that is because mainly they they do or they register to be organic. They develop their markets. And there's a cost associated to keep their certification. So it de really depends of local uh, regulation, and if they need to maintain their their certification, of course they will continue. But otherwise, they uh, they after a few uh, 
after they obtain it or after a few years they will they will remove their they will stop paying to be certified uh, and but we believe that we can get better and more detail from uh, the agency that's responsible to uh, make sure that these uh, these uh, operation report uh, report the proper uh, for example uh, uh, but the challenge we always have to as i mentioned the response burden so um it's some farms are in transition or it's not their full operation that's organic because they want to to minimize the the risk so they they, they just do uh, either in, into transition or fully uh, like a part or maybe 50 percent of the their land is of their crop is into is organic the other one is not so next slide please okay you can move to the so in terms of wage we we assess this was it was desirable and acceptable uh there's no minimum national wage rate. It's it's really at uh, uh, at the provincial level, uh, lower level of government, um, and due to our labor laws, uh, which our rates uh, are usually desirable or acceptable. Uh, again, this is an area where we have access to administrative data, and we could probably do a better better job next time to report that that indicator because we know which farms have worker and uh, and we have access to the the uh, wage or what's report for uh, what what was given to uh, the, the worker so yeah uh, next next slide please food insecurity um, um we we don't measure it in our in the census of agriculture or um however there's a there we we've, we've been working at the uh, gen c level at stats Can statistic canada there we have a canadian community health survey and if it would be possible to get a better measure of uh, by linking this survey with the census of agriculture and the census of population uh, however it's uh, back to the question uh, um, so how many hectare and if we if we, once we link all the employees to the farm then it's possible to extract the or derive the actors. Next, please. Okay, next one, please. Uh, secure tenure. It's uh, basically it's well defined property right in in uh, in laws. So uh, can um, uh, there's may maybe in some. Uh, indigenous and religious communities where uh, it's not personal property so it's more to the community so so that's why we answered that was desirable or acceptable next slide please so in conclusion um, and gives a bit more time for a question maybe so uh, we we acknowledge it's it's a great challenge to measure uh, sustainability. Even when we start the exercise, we look at the questionnaire and discuss with my colleague. We had some also of uh, industry or uh, farm organization that were quite concerned as well. Um, however, it's uh, it does we acknowledge it provide a, a good framework to start measuring sustainability um, again 
the global objective is to have measure comparable across countries. So uh, to keep that in mind, uh, even sometime we we may think that, oh, so if we improvise too much, it might just uh, be very hard to, to compare among ourselves. And uh, so in some case, we did not follow perfectly, but uh, we're confident that the information provided was, was sufficient and, um, and, and but uh, we still we still committed to to continue uh, it it does take some resource uh we uh, but uh, we still commit commute uh, committed to continue and maybe uh send a, another revised version once we had made some some progress of of for or we can report some some of the comparison that where we use proxy and where we convert uh, things into uh, in, into actor if the the value of the would have changed so uh next slide please so i just leave my two email i'm i'm not sure which one is working i think the first one is the second one is still working but we're in period of transition where the Canada.c is going to not work anymore soon. So that's why I left the two. So we're uh, just here for question. And I could not see if there were any comments on the screen. So, uh, so, or. Okay, uh, apparently no question. Thank you everybody again for having participated to this uh, second day of the virtual training on the SDG 241. Today also has been a very concentrated day. We have seen the last sub indicators of the 241 at the SDG 241. We have gone through also the questionnaires. We have seen the results of the pilot phase. And finally, we have also listened to the experience uh, uh, from our Canada colleagues. We can now conclude the day and I wish you a nice evening and see you tomorrow for the last session. So where we plan to have a more interactive discussions, you will be encouraged to talk. Of course, not all of you, unfortunately, but some of you, uh, we will be happy to discuss and go in deep on in the uh, issues and plan for each country. So thank you again and see you tomorrow. Okay, bye. Bye bye. Thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have a look. 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 I'